Hey guys, Daniel from DashClicks here. So in this video, I'm gonna go over how to run an A-B test in Google Analytics. Now, for the case of this video, I'm not gonna give you a step-by-step -step explanation of how to create an A-B test in Google Analytics because I'd recommend actually clicking the blog in the description or if you're already on the blog that this uh, video is attached to, um, go ahead and read it because it'll have detailed instructions on there. In this video, I wanna go over why A-B tests won't work for you, things to think about, and just kind of give you some tips and tricks on when you are A-B testing on kind of best practices, okay? Let's jump right into it. So what is A-B testing? It's super simple. Basically, you have an ad, or whatever piece of content or whatever it is that you have. Then you create a copy of it and make one slight change to the, the B version. So there's A and there's B. And the one slight change, you run both, and then you see if that one change made it work, made the ad perform better or worse. And then based on that, you can determine if control is working better for you or if the B test is working better. And you can keep doing this over and over again with one change at a time. And so it gives you an idea of specifically what is making an ad perform better or specifically what is making an ad perform worse, okay? Let's jump into it. So what causes A-B tests to fail? This is really important. First of all, you aren't making any significant changes to the sequential version of the standard, okay? Maybe the changes are so minuscule and minute that it doesn't change any data, so you aren't really seeing a difference. Number two is your testing is too, um, has, pff, you're testing too many changes <laughs> at once. Um, so I recommend when you do an A-B test, only make one significant change, significant change, because if that ad performs better, at least you know, well, I made this one change. It's got to be due to that. If you make a bunch of changes, you're not going to know which change made the results come in. Number three, you're stopping the test too soon. Okay. You really have, this is actually a really common thing. People stop tests too soon because they just feel like they're wasting money. Actually, you're spent, you're investing money to gather data to see what works. Um, but you're stopping it too soon and you're not collecting enough data. Number four, the tests focus on personal bias. So here's a good little passage I wanna, I wanna read to you that I think really sums it up nicely. So this one can be a bit harder to identify, but your personal bias may be blocking you from accurately assessing problems with the page, okay? What that means is you gotta really focus on the data, what's working, and really try to take your bias out of it because that could affect your results. So here are some key elements that I wanna kind of briefly go over that will help and things you need to focus on to help with A-B testing. You need to focus on sales copy, okay? You need to focus on headlines, those are really important. You need to focus on adding social proof because having other people than yourself vouching for you is the most powerful thing you can do. Number four, number four is hone in on your web page design. Um, and if you kind of can focus on all these areas and really put some time and effort into strategizing, making sure what you're putting out speaks directly to a specific, specific dream buyer, then you will start seeing better results in your A-B testing. And then you can really make some decisions on scaling up your ad account. So if you have, to, if you have not done so already, make sure you sign up for your forever free Dash Clicks account. And I'll see you guys in the next video.